Well, good morning, Saturn Road. Gary Bingham here with another lesson from the Proverbs. I hope you're um, doing well at home. We are in an, another new chapter now that we have this uh, lockdown in our society, but uh, we're trying to stay in touch with you as our church family. And I know I'm benefiting from the teachings of Jeff and Kevin, and I hope you'll gain some things from this Proverbs 4 today. So let's jump right into Proverbs 4. I'm going to start by reading the first nine verses. Hear, O son, a father's instruction, and be attentive that you may gain insight. For I give you good precepts. Do not forsake my teaching. When I was a son with my father, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he taught me and said to me, Let your heart hold fast my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get insight. Do not forget, and do not turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will keep you. Love her, and she will guard you. The beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom and whatever you get, get insight. Prize her highly and she will be exalted. She will honor you and if you embrace her, she will place on your head a graceful garland. She will bestow on you a beautiful crown. I love how this writer through the inspiration of the, the spirit, I guess this is Solomon talking here, talks about personal relationships in this context of, of wisdom. You'll see in this chapter a father, and you'll see a son, and then you'll see this woman that he calls wisdom. And it's interesting that he refers to wisdom in this feminine person. That's probably not a big surprise to many of you. I know in my household it's the ladies that usually have the most wisdom, and that's maybe why he uses that terminology here. But he tells his son to treat wisdom like a lady. Maybe uh, treat her like you would your mother or your sister or your wife. Treat them with honor and respect. And in using this language, he's telling us that having wisdom and pursuing wisdom is like pursuing a relationship, maybe like a friendship with another person. And we need to do the things in our lives as we pursue wisdom that we would do to pursue another person. We find time together. We make opportunities together. We pray for each other. We spend time with each other. We make opportunities together. We are to do the things that help us pursue this relationship called wisdom. Let's go on in verse 10 through 15. He says, Hear my son and accept my words, that the years of your life may be many. I have taught you the way of wisdom, and I have led you in the paths of uprightness. When you walk, your step will not be hampered, and if you run, you will not stumble. Keep hold of instruction. Do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of the evil. Avoid it. Do not go on it. Turn away from it and pass on. Again, he's talking about how beautiful this relationship is with this person he calls wisdom, this lady he calls wisdom. In the beginning of this chapter, and then here again in this section, you see him referring to a father uh, giving instruction to his kids, a father giving instruction to his son. And I think it's important for us as men to remember that it is one of our responsibilities to pass on our faith and to pass on this godly wisdom to our kids. Think about your dad and the best advice he ever gave you. If your dad was like my dad, he didn't do a lot of verbal teaching, but he did a whole lot of showing me what he expected of me and showing me what he thought wisdom was and showing me what he thought godly conduct was. He was one of those guys who didn't say much, but he was one of those guys who always said like measure twice and cut once or make sure you do the job right the first time or always say yes sir and no sir and yes ma'am and no ma'am. That was my dad. But I saw him in his life and how he treated people and how he interacted with God and respected God. And he showed me the wisdom through what he did more than what he said. Did your dad ever ask you to be careful or tell you to be careful when you went out? Maybe when you're going out on a date or with some friends. And you, my dad would always say, be careful where you're going and pay attention to your surroundings. And so I carried that over with Adam and Samantha. It became a kind of a standing joke in our house that I always told them to be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of your surroundings so you can avoid trouble. And they would laugh at me and everything, but I knew some things that they didn't know. I knew there were some places they didn't need to go. And that's what Solomon is telling his son here in this chapter. Be aware of your surroundings. Be careful where you're going. Be careful where you go. I'm not sure, but Solomon, uh, as he wrote this, remember who his dad was. His dad was King David who wrote a lot of the Psalms and listen to what David said about this same concept. Maybe this is where Solomon got this wisdom that, he sees, that we see in chapter 4. In Psalm 1, David says this, Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step of the wicked, 
or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, and whatever they do prospers. I love that word picture out of Psalm 1 about being a tree that's planted by water and bearing fruit, the stability of that. David tells his son Solomon, be careful where you walk, be careful where you stop, and be careful where you stand. Be careful where you sit down. Maybe Solomon finally listened to his old dad, and that's where we get this teaching out of Proverbs 4. So what paths are we to avoid? Where are these places we shouldn't go? For this day and time, I've thought about two or three I want to share with you today. And one of the things is the path of fear. I think we need to stay off of the path of fear. Someone said that the best or the most frequent command in the scriptures is fear not or do not be afraid. Over a hundred times in the New Testament, Old Testament, somebody is told to do not be afraid. And usually it's God or an angel or Jesus saying that. In our study of the book of Joshua back in our adult classes, God five different times in the book of Joshua says, Joshua, don't be afraid. I'm going to be with you. You've seen this little bumper sticker, faith over fear. Because our anchor is different, because our citizenship is different, we don't react and become afraid of what scares other people. I love Psalm 21, verse 1, 27, verse 1. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold of this life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So what are you afraid of? I remember as a child, at least for most of us, we'll have this same memory. Whenever things got scary, maybe a thunderstorm came up or a tornado warning, or maybe somebody at school was bullying you or making fun of you, if you could just get close to your dad, if you could grab your dad's hand, if you could just see him, if you could hear his voice, things got better. You felt safer and you were not afraid any longer because you were with God, with, with your dad. And it's the same thing with God. That's why this personal relationship that we see here in Proverbs 4 is so, so very important that we have that father-child relationship with God. Another path that I think we need to be careful about is this, uh, the area of what we feed our minds with, what we feed our eyes and ears with. I want you to look at verse 20 through 27 of Proverbs 4. He says this, My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight and keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to the one whose, whose whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free from perversity. Keep correct, corrupt talk from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the path of your feet and be steadfast in your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. Solomon's saying again, be careful what you listen to. Be careful what you watch. Be careful what you say. There's a little kid song that we used when our kids were little and we still use it in our kids' classes today. Oh, be careful little eyes what you see. And then we go and say, oh, careful little ears what you hear. And oh, careful little feet where you go. That's not just a song for kids. That's a song for big folks too. It's so, so important that we be careful about what we put into our mind and put it into our eyes and our ears. Uh, one of the dangers of this crazy time is that we're trapped at home in front of the TV, in front of our computer more than we might be on a regular basis. And all of us need to be careful of what we're watching and what we're listening to. In verse 23 in the NIV, he says, above all else, guard your heart because it is the wellspring of life. This is important stuff. This is important what we listen to and what we watch and what we're putting into our hearts. What is your speech like these days? Are we too negative? Are we too critical? What are we watching on TV and on our computers during this extra time? Be careful what shows we're watching. Be careful what movies we're watching. Be, I might even say be careful about all the news that we're watching. I might even be so bold as to say we might already go to the Hallmark Channel and watch a Christmas movie. I'm not sure about that yet. Guard your heart, protect yourselves, and dads take the lead in this in your home right now. Help your kids and your wives and your family guard and control what's going on into their minds. The last path I want to talk to you about today is the path that we need to avoid is the path of obsessive preoccupation with our stuff, with our things. I've used this phrase several times with other people that we too often chase things 
hard in the wrong direction. There are things we should chase after and there are things we need to avoid and things we don't need to chase after. And none of us are immune from this constant wisdom from the world to play by the standards of the world and let the world dictate what its success is. The world tells us that success is by measured by what we have, the stuff that we have, our money, our homes, and our cars, all my stuff. There is nothing like a total collapse of the economy and the markets to help us understand this lesson. A month ago, we were tearing down our barns and building bigger ones. And now most of us would tell, turn in our shares of Apple stock or AT&T for a good supply of toilet paper. It's crazy times, but there's lessons to be learned here. We don't put our value and our hope in things. Someone told me a long time ago there are three different types of people. Those who say it is, it is yours and I want it and I'll take it. There are people who say what's mine is mine and I'm going to keep it. And there are people who say what's mine is yours and I'll share it. True wisdom tells us that things don't matter. Things don't last. Nothing lasts, not even life itself. But relationships do matter. And relationships affect not only this life, but the next life as well. I confess in past times I've been too concerned about my retirement accounts. And I'm trying hard to embrace the teachings of Christ in Matthew 6. Don't store up for yourself treasures on the earth. Don't worry about your life and what you're going to need and what you're going to eat and what you're going to have. And that God already knows what I need. I tell you, I've never been more proud to be a part of this Saturn Road Church family. As we've reached out to the congregation by making phone calls and contacts over the last couple of weeks, we are asking people, do they have any needs? Do they have anything that we can do for them? And the first morning we put out those calls, we had two responses. One of them was Ken Bonham saying he needed somebody to wash his car. And another was a lady here in the church who actually needed somebody to come by her house and help her with some maintenance around her house. And then we called the Maynard boys and they took off and took care of that real quickly and did a great job. Ken Bonham's car is probably still dirty because we're not going to wash Ken Bonham's car. But what we most often heard and what we uh, were so proud of is as we call people, they say, we're fine, we're fine, don't worry about us. But if you know somebody else that needs help, let us know. We'll be glad to go get stuff. We'll be glad to share what we've got. We've got a lot of folks at Saturn Road with this godly wisdom uh, that says what's mine is yours and I'll share it. And I'm so proud of that. So we're not going to go down the path of fear. We're not going to go down the path of filling our eyes and minds with negative and immoral media, music, movies, and news. And we're not going to go down this path of hoarding and putting in our confidence in our stuff. So let me close this teaching on Proverbs 4 by sharing verse 18 and verse 20 with you. Verse 18 says, Put the path of the righteous, but the path of the righteous is like the light of the dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until full day. And then verse 20 says, My son, be attentive to my words, and incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight, keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and healing to all flesh. They're healing to all. This wisdom, these words from God can actually heal our situations in life right now. This is a time for those of godly wisdom and godly perspective to shine brighter and brighter until full day comes. This is a time of opportunity for God's people to help others in this life and find that healing that God promises. Jeff and I were talking last week and wondering what the church was going to be like when all this was over with. And I'll confess to you in my darker days, I, I get a little fearful about that, that we may never come back the way we were before. People might get used to this not meeting together. I kind of doubt that now. But when I stay in the Word and when I look at this godly wisdom out of Proverbs 4 and all these teachings, our better days can be ahead of us. If we stay on the right paths, if we're aware of our surroundings and stay out of the trouble that Solomon warns us about, more and more that we'll shine and shine bright, we'll be soft and light in these times. And with God's help, I really believe our best days are ahead of us. I really believe that and I hope you do too. God bless you and stay in touch with your church family. Stay in the word. Tomorrow will be chapter 5 of Proverbs with Kevin McKee and I know you'll want to tune in for that. He's a great young man. Thank you for your time today.